Hey all, this is Desmond with another photography tutorial. And this time I'm going to do a raw therapy tutorial, which is going to act as a companion to a dark table tutorial that I did using the same image, and which I'm going to link to in the description of this video. Now in the dark table tutorial, what I did was using this image of my hand holding a set of dice, I attempted to create a very moody, sort of atmospheric image, very, very stylized. And what I'm going to do is recreate as closely as possible that same style of image, but this time using raw therapy rather than dark table. So I have the image here, which was photographed in my kitchen, very informal setup. The lighting in my kitchen functions sort of as a large overhead softbox, so it produces a very even lighting. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a snapshot so that we're going to be able to take a look and see our results from the processing when we're done. Now, I mentioned this in the dark table tutorial. I very rarely alter the exposure compensation for the raw files that I process for the simple reason that even though raw files don't do a lot of processing in camera, one thing that they do do is give the correct exposure. So if you've been correct in your exposure, then your raw file is correct in its exposure. And for me personally, I find that it's better to change things using tone curves and other methods than it is to affect the exposure. So beginning with this image, what I'm going to do is use the two turn tone curves that raw therapy provides. Now I'm going to set both of them to custom. And the first one I'm going to change from standard to saturation and value blending. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to create an S curve that's more curved on the top than it is on the bottom. And I'm going to add a little bit more curve to the middle tones. So then I'm also going to come down to Tone Curve 2, change that to Custom as well. And I'm going to change that from Standard to the Film-like Curve Mode. And again I'm going to make an S-Curve. Now this is going to lighten the tones of the image considerably. And as far as S's go, that film-like curve is going to be not much of an S at all when it comes to the bottom left of that curve. I'm going to keep it mostly on the base. So you see we've changed the tone of the image quite considerably already. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to change the lightness, not very much, by a factor of about 5, and I'm going to change the contrast by a factor of 3. Now, with this image, I'm not really going to do any nose noise reduction because it's an ISO of 200, but I am going to change, as I did with the dark table tutorial, the white balance temperature. And I'm going to change that to 4000 to begin with. And then I'm also going to affect the channel mixer. In a moment I'll come back to the vibrance, but I'm going to do the channel mixer first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my blues a little. To about 125 percent. 124, 126. And then I'm going to decrease my reds by a factor of about 15. Actually, a factor of about 10. 
and I'm going to decrease my greens by a factor of about seven. So with that done, I'm going to go back up to the Vibrance. I'm going to enable that. I'm going to unlink pastel and saturated tones. And I'm going to protect skin tones. And the pastel tones I'm going to drop way down to about 65. And the saturated tones I'm going to drop down to about 20. Now the next thing I'm going to do is because I suspect there's some distortion in this image, I'm going to do the auto distortion correction. It's going to do a little correction right there for me. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to affect the vignetting correction. Now Raw Therapy provides a vignetting filter under the exposure module, which is a great filter but I find that the vignetting correction allows me a little more versatility and so I'm going to drop that radius down to about 25 and I'm going to drop that amount down to about 40 and I'm going to up the strength to about 13 to start with so that's quite a vignette there So I'm going to change the radius, move that to about 35. And now what I like about the vignetting correction dialog box is that it's going to allow me to change the focus of the vignette along the X and Y axis independently. So now I have the vignette about where I want it. I'm going to go back to my exposure tab. I'm going to increase my black point a little. I'm going to increase my lightness and my contrast. So what I'm doing is I'm leading the eye to what I consider the subject of the image or the main focus of the image, which is the dice in my hand. While I'm allowing the vignette to darken the other images, the outlining of the image to sort of make it more unobtrusive. And I'm gonna tweak, tweak my tone curves as needed, adding extra points to sort of keep it in line with what I want. And I'm going to drop my saturation down about 10. Now, one of the last things I'm going to do is I'm going to make a crop on this image. So I'm going to enable the crop dialog. I'm going to fix the ratio. And then I'm just going to arrange that crop in such a way that the main focus of the image is more centered. And the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable sharpening on this image. Now one thing that I often will check with raw therapy is what method of demosaicing is using. Usually I'll leave that on a maze if it's already on a maze. If it's not on a maze, if it for instance was on fast, I would change it to a maze. So now the last thing to do is to get this image ready for exporting. And I can see here this is the image that we ended up with, and this is the image that we started with. As you can see, it's a very marked difference. 
and it really sort of brings out a very stylistic form of image processing. This is more artistic than straight photography, uh, but if you find a use for it, I'll be happy. And so before I export it, what I would do is close this history, close the image, go to the queue, and start it processing. At that point, I would open the image in GIP for whatever other last minute adjustments I might like to make. This has been a very, very quick tutorial. I hope it's useful for someone out there. Um, again, I'll link to the Darktable tutorial as well in the comments. If it's been useful for you, I'm very glad to hear it. And I'll be back with another tutorial soon. Bye for now.